If you've ever wanted to add really cool effects to your gameplay during a recording or live stream, or perhaps improve the quality of how your gameplay looks in the final stream through sharpness or color mapping or add some cool green screen effects or depth of field effects, uh, NVIDIA now has a beta feature within the GeForce experience that allows you to do it and it works with OBS, it works with just about anything, and it's really cool. We're going to be checking it out right after this. TubeBuddy is the best tool you can get to manage your YouTube channel. You can update videos in bulk, optimize your SEO, syndicate to social media, back up your metadata, and more, all with a simple browser extension. Head to eposvox.com slash TubeBuddy to learn more and download it for free. All right, this tutorial will require you to have the NVIDIA GeForce Experience software installed on your machine. If you, for whatever reason, skipped that installation during the driver install, or just have been running with the Windows default drivers for whatever reason, this is the time to acquire it from NVIDIA's website. I'll have a link in the video description. If you already have it, go ahead and open it up and this will require the latest updates. This is a beta tool, so you will need to install or activate the experimental features. With the settings icon right here, the little cog, click that and then below the version you have installed, enable experimental features. A GeForce update may be required. You need to check that. Now this may require a software update, as it says, uh, so you can check that by closing it. It may it may auto update for you if it's required. I'm not really sure. I don't remember what happened last time. Like it, it was it was auto updated, and I didn't need to update when I enabled it today. And if you reopen GeForce Experience or you reboot and reopen GeForce Experience, theoretically it will update for you, and you should be fine. And this will all be here. But again, this is a beta feature, and they could pull it back out at some point until it's ready. It looks like the latest download is working fine for my version. So then you pull up GeForce Experience by hitting Alt Z or whatever you have changed the hotkey to. And you will now notice you have photo mode and that may have already been added in. But game filter over here, which is Alt F3, is now available. But as you see, a supported game is required to use this feature. Okay, once you are in your game, and I, I, I honestly don't, I will try to find it to link it in the video description, but I don't have a list of supported games. Uh, but Blackout or Black Ops 4 seems to work. You have three layers uh, or three presets of styles, rather. So here you can choose style one, add a filter, you can make it black and white, you can choose depth of field, green screen stuff. Uh, what happens if we choose depth of field here? Depth of field can interact with UI elements, uh, <laughs> as you can see, and think that the UI is either close or further away from the screen and cause some weird stuff. Uh, so I am. Not going to want that one. You can see the controls over here on the left. You can move the order of effects or remove them with the trash can icon. I don't want black and white. What does green screen do here? Oh, you can actually select what the background is and like cut it out. That's interesting. All right. <laughs> I'm learning this along with you. I haven't actually messed with these yet. I've only seen it in concept videos, old film videos. There's special effects. Actually, if we remove... You can add like, ah, oh, this is actually going to be cool. You can add little vintage things. You can make it a sketch effect. You can make it a halftone. You can do some cool little like retro stuff here. And then like I said, you can switch between three different presets that you have or just turn them off, which is really cool. So you can do some cool stuff for your stream there. And then again, Alt F3 pulls this up, turns it off. I believe they are working on keybinds. Actually, if we go to settings here, keyboard shortcuts. Actually, yeah, here we go. You can set up your own keyboard shortcut for turning them on or off. So I'm going to set up Alt. I don't see anything for Alt F5. Already in use. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm just going to delete that. There we go. F5, so you can set up keyboard shortcuts for either toggling the filters on or off or switching between your presets. So then you can turn them on or off at will, which is kind of cool because you may not always want it. But where the benefit comes in for game streaming isn't necessarily all the crazy special effects, uh, but a few specific ones. For example, I'm sorry, I just really want to show some of these off because they're just really goofy and ridiculous. There you can have only kind of the center of your field of view in focus, which might help for attention of your viewers, or if you actually want to blur out the top and bottom of your screen, there are some games where UI elements, you don't want to show the top and bottom. There is, uh, 
a vignette, similar thing, just kind of darken the corners to make it seem like, or you know, to keep your viewers focus in the middle. You can adjust intensity, make it super dramatic or not. There's also letterboxing, uh, there it is. And you can actually change the ratio of the letterboxing. Again, you can cut out and black out information or make it fit certain, you know, make it fit how you want your stream to be super dramatic. If you add that up with special effects and get them all super dramatic, you can make something like a preset for when things get super intense. Or you can simply just like start sharpening things. So there's details. So you can add HDR toning, bloom elements, and sharpening percentage to your feed, which will help with how it looks in the final encode because your videos or you know your gameplay does lose a little bit of sharpness when you encode it for a live stream. You will want to play around with these to get the best possible settings because this may not be what you want. But you can you can really tweak these to make your stream look a little bit better and then have you know have one that's like super clean and sharp feed and then another one that's like dramatic moment and another one that's just like something cool or totally blurred out for when you're AFK or something. There's a lot you could do here and this does translate to the OBS game capture or whatever game capture thing in most cases because it interacts directly with your game, which is why it requires specific game hooks and unfortunately won't work with everything. But I think it's really neat and I really hope some people check it out because I really think it will add a lot of interesting elements to viewers. I will have a little bit here at the end of gameplay with some of these filters applied. I know, you know, just as a concept, it might seem really weird. I did want to add that the performance trade-off for these kinds of filters can be fairly significant depending on which graphics card architecture you are on. Obviously, this requires NVIDIA graphics cards in the first place, uh, but the the actual performance cost of these kinds of effects is significantly lower on the RTX series of cards versus the older GTX 10 series and back. On my GTX 1080, I went from about 115-ish, I didn't get hard benchmark numbers, but roughly from what I eyed, 115-ish uh, frames per second in Black Ops 4 to when I stacked up a bunch of filters and stuff around 80 or 90 FPS, which could be problematic for some. But again, this is more meant to further utilize the extra features of the RTX cards. Also, I really wish they would still port uh, <laughs> GeForce Experience to Linux, but that's not going to happen for a while. I would also love for them to develop this to a point where you could add this as a filter that only goes to like game capture or somehow develop a plugin for OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS that adds this as a filter stat while still utilizing the same GPU acceleration that happens in GeForce Experience because uh, as is whatever you add to it you have to deal with while you play the game which can be very undesirable, especially if you're obfuscating on-screen elements. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I'm pretty excited for this. NVIDIA is doing a lot to kind of invest in uh, streamers and technology for streamers to make things better and to add features that you might actually want. And I think they're doing a pretty good job, and this is their first big like debut of it. And again, it's still beta, it's still work in progress. There's going to be issues. You can probably report those in the uh, NVIDIA GeForce forum. But just wanted to showcase it. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. I'm Maples Vox here to make tech easier and more fun. Check out my OBS Masterclass if you missed it. And I'll see you in the next guide.